Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to take just a quick second to share with you my top three Maligator Mom must-haves. First on my list is Tactipup.com. Now these are the collars that you see my dogs wearing in all my videos, and I personally prefer the two inch width. You can get them with their name embroidered on them, and I always have them add a handle. These collars are made with a cobra buckle and all metal hardware. They are incredibly durable and they are made right here in the USA. So if you're interested, check out tactipup.com and use my code MALLIGATORMOM to save 10%. And number two, everybody wants to know, what do you feed your dogs? Well, this is it. I feed my dogs Munster Milling. Now this is a customizable kibble, so you can actually go onto their website and select additives that they will mix fresh into your bag. It's absolutely phenomenal. I add things like bacon fat, salmon oil, probiotic, and freeze-dried elk. If you're interested, use my code MALLIGATORMOM and you will save 55% off your first custom bag. And number three, if you are interested in online dog training videos, you definitely need to check out robertcabral.com. I have consumed a lot of online dog training videos and Robert is by far the best. Head over to robertcabral.com, use code MALLIGATORMOM. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom, and today we are going to talk about something that's probably gonna ruffle some feathers. So um, I wanna take a quick vote. Be honest with yourself. Raise your hand if you think that your Belgian Malinois is naturally protective. Okay. Now, if you just raised your hand, this video is for you. So if you're one of the people who just raised your hand because you believe that your Belgian Malinois is a naturally protective dog, you're not alone. You're wrong, but you're not alone. And that is exactly why I think today's topic is super, super important. Lately, I have seen more and more people getting into the Belgian Malinois breed because they love the idea that's being sensationalized everywhere on uh, social media, in the movies, you name it, of these um, big, scary Belgian Malinois who are these fierce guardians. And um, they really romanticize the idea that the relationship between a dog and owner is um, this magical relationship where the dog has such strong love and, and affection for you that they would die for you, right? It, it really is this romanticized idea when nothing could really be further from the truth when it comes to a true, genuine, trained protection dog. So I wanna start off by actually showing you some of the videos that I just went and grabbed off of TikTok right before I started filming. And these were very, very easy to find and there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them playing out this exact scenario. So what you're gonna see is just a few of the videos that I grabbed and downloaded really quickly. I'm gonna put them here in the video so you can watch them so you can get an idea of just exactly what I mean. that the clips that you just saw are familiar to you. 
I'm sure that you've seen many, many clips like this across social media yourself. And um, I think what's really interesting to point out is that I have dogs who are genuinely trained in personal protection. And when I watch a video like that, I think to myself immediately, my dog wouldn't behave that way. And my dog is a genuine trained protection dog. Now, I can approach my children and wrestle with my children and manhandle my children and pick them up and toss them into the pillows or on the bed, right? And have a great time with my children in a physical way. And my dogs are not interrupting me, trying to get in between me, barking at me, biting at me. None of that exists. So clearly, there is a giant disconnect from what the average family or pet owner thinks is a protective dog and what a protective dog, protective dog really, really is. I think it's just an important conversation to have and we're gonna have it today and we're just gonna talk honestly about all of this because this is not a good narrative to be pushing and unfortunately it comes to the forefront because again, it just pulls at people's heartstrings and it resonates with people and it gets a lot of views. And unfortunately, we see that leading to a lot of people purchasing Belgian Malinois, thinking that they're just gonna be naturally protective and that this is what that looks like when the average pet might be able to get away with that kind of behavior in the home and nothing ever escalate. But a Malinois is different. And this behavior could actually escalate into something bad where it becomes a dangerous situation and all of a sudden, these scenarios that you practice or, or play out at home, uh, demonstrating your naturally protective dog, are gonna escalate with a Malinois more likely than not. So we need to speak honestly about why you purchased a Malinois. If your intent was to purchase this Malinois to be a personal protection dog, family protection dog, guardian of any kind, then we have to talk honestly about the hundreds of hours of professional training that actually go into accomplishing a true protection dog. So here's the situation that has me worried. This is a situation that I see playing out more and more often with people who have Belgian Malinois and find their way to my channel. And then by proxy, I start seeing their content and I'm seeing this disturbing trend. And so, um, Hopefully you guys have found your way to this video so that we can get you some better information about the dog that you just purchased. So I see people purchasing a Belgian Malinois as a puppy. They do so because they want a protection dog. They get the puppy. They do not understand or want to working with a professional trainer. They think that if they buy a tug or a wedge or, or something like that off of Amazon um, and maybe back tie the dog to the tree in their front yard and do some bite work or some tug play, that they have then created their own protection dog. Voila, right? Um, it's as easy as that. That's, that's how naturally protected the Belgian Malinois is and how easy they are to train and um, now they've got this protection dog and they post videos and tell their family and friends that they have a protection dog. Um, and they don't, they don't. And if that's you, you don't have a protection dog. What you probably have is a liability because if you are actually putting yourself in situations or you live geographically in an unsafe area where you have a really good reason to want a protection dog, and you take this dog with you under the belief and confidence that this dog is your protector and guardian, guardian, and you get into a situation where you actually need to deploy your dog, what do you think is gonna happen? You, you, you just don't, you, you cannot train a personal protection dog yourself. You, you can't do that. Like, there's just this huge misunderstanding that if you watch YouTube videos or, you know, that you can train your own personal protection dog and you cannot, that, that type of training is not training that you can do on your own. 
you have to seek out a professional. This dog has to be able to be handled by other people. You don't want to teach your dog to bite, to do personal protection work on yourself. That's, that's not how that work is accomplished. Um, not to mention that just as a novice coming in, if this is your first dog and you have no clue what personal protection training really involves, then you have no idea the hundreds of hours of exposure, of desensitization, of overcoming pressures to make sure that your dog is going to bite um, when you deploy them, that you can count on the dog actually biting when you tell them to bite. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. You just can't do that on your own. You can't do that by watching YouTube videos and you don't wanna teach personal protection on yourself. This is bad, this is a bad idea. I know people don't wanna hear this and I, and I almost have a hard time saying it because I think I'm gonna get a lot of backlash from people, but I just have to tell you guys the truth. I think a lot of people come to my channel because they are first time Malinois owners and so they come watch my channel because they're seeking advice on like, hey, how do you manage all that? How did you do all that? Um, I don't train my own dogs that way. I train with my dogs, I handle my dogs, but I don't teach my dogs in personal protection on myself or my family members. They're not taught to bite me, that's not work that I do at home. That type of training is training that I do because I go to a professional trainer who um, has years and years of experience training personal protection dogs. At some point, you have to progress your dog's training beyond biting a sleeve or a wedge. They have to be able to bite when there is no equipment. Um, they have to be able to overcome all kinds of environmental obstacles uh, to, to, to bite under pressure, to be, to be counted on 100%. It takes hundreds of hours to achieve that. So to wrap this up, um, please understand that if you have a Malinois and your intent is to train in personal protection, there is no way around it. You have to invest in professional training to accomplish that. You just do. Most Malinois will bite a sleeve or bite a wedge. Um, that's in their breed, right? Like that's, that's part of their temperament and drive. And so there are definitely dogs that are better suited, that have better drives and temperaments to accomplish that level of training. But that does not mean that it comes naturally. Your dog is not protective of you in the sense that you think they are. Even my dog, who I love to death, I am under no like disillusion that my dog is protecting me because he just loves me and doesn't want anything to happen to me. That's not what's going through his mind. As romanticized and you know, a notion as that is, and as much as we would all like to believe that, that is not what's really going on in the dog's mind. What's really going on is that the dog is executing the training that they've been uh, trained for. That's what's going on in their mind. You know, like most training, protection training starts off as a game and it's a reward system, and you're doing something that the dog loves to do. And eventually, that turns into a learned behavior that you can start to count on. But like all things, it starts off like a game. It's not starting off in any way, form, or fashion because the dog loves you or is being naturally protective over you. So, um, We've got to let go of romanticizing that whole idea and understand that true protection dogs are achieved 
through training, through training, through executing hundreds of hours of training. It is a learned behavior. So, um, you know, I, I know that that's not as romantic as we would all like it to be, but it is the truth. And we need to be honest about ourselves here. If we're going to have conversations about Belgian Malinois, then we need to have honest ones because more and more of them are ending up in the hands of people who cannot handle them or get one for one reason, realize they, they can't accomplish it, don't want to spend money on training, didn't realize they needed to spend money on training, and so they dump the dog or rehome the dog. And, you know, the dog is either put down or it has a bunch of problems and all the problems you created become inherited by the new owner. And it's just this vicious cycle. So hopefully this video does some justice. It's, it's such a deep, deep subject that we could really dive into for a long time. But I'm trying to just kind of, you know, talk about the main points to hopefully prevent some people who think they want to get one of these dogs for this reason, who aren't really prepared or understand what goes into it, or people who maybe have just got one of these dogs and they think, oh, you know, I'll just watch some YouTube videos and do it myself. Um, that's not going to cut it. So hopefully this served that purpose and um, we can continue to have honest conversations here on the channel. If you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments. Explain to me why I'm wrong. Um, if you do agree or you have any situations that you could share in the comment section below that people could come and read uh, that would be helpful to the audience and to the community that we've built, then share that as well. And, um, you know, like always, make sure that you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Um, I'm trying to be here every Saturday right now, but as you guys know, I'm going through some things in my personal life, and so I'm, I'm maybe going to get to it every Saturday, maybe not. I'm not holding myself super accountable right now, so thank you guys for your patience and understanding while that all gets worked out. Um, but you can keep up with me over on Instagram or TikTok. I'm still active there. And of course, check out our Discord. If you have not yet uh, signed up for the Working Dog Discord, I highly, highly encourage you to do that. And I'm gonna give you one big, big reason why you should real quick before we get out of here. Um, the Working Dog Discord is where you are going to be whitelisted to have the first opportunity to get free admission to the online dog conference that we are hosting on May 7th. Registration is not open yet. It's not open yet. But as soon as it is open, people in the Working Dog Discord are going to have early access to get those free seats. We have a bucket of 500 seats that we paid for up front that we want to give to you guys. So um, make sure that you're over there. We're super active over there. We've got all kinds of trainers that we've introduced into the space. Um, it's just a fun little community that we're building. We've got about 700 members now. We're aiming to get to 1,000 by the end of the month. Hopefully we can achieve that and you can help make that possible. So I will leave a link down below, an invite link, and you just need to go create an account and log in and say hi. So that's it, let's get out of here. I'll see you guys maybe next week, maybe not. <laughs>